The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. You received. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as with everything when Jesus speaks, it's always so very personal and direct and immediate. And we can tell so much about who he is and what he speaks about by the kind of images he uses. It's quite clear that he had a powerful and wonderful image of fatherhood. He challenged people, do you think a good father would give someone a stone or a snake if the person were hungry? His sense of intimacy with God as father drew from the fatherhood that he received from St. Joseph. And when he talked about a chicken bringing its young people, gathering around its breast like a mother hen, he said, we can hear echoes of the intimacy, the closeness he had with his own mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. In his humanity, Jesus received the gift of wonderful parents, not without a struggle, but deep down as a base in his reality who have a sense that he knew he was gifted by wonderful parents. And he had a sense, too, of the goodness of creation. All the images he uses from nature, trees and rocks and seeds, uh, light, water, tell us that he saw in the creation that was before him something that was very good, something that was blessed. And his sense of gratitude was deep and profound. He knew he had received that from the Father. With Jesus, his life work was always being for others, caring for other people, working for them, attending to them. And in going out to other people, he knew that he had the gift of a mission that was given to him in life. And the gift was added to in its bounty by the fact that not only did he give to other people, he had the courtesy, the grace, the goodness to be able to receive from people. When you can not only give, but you can receive, then you know that creation is not evil. It's not malignant at its root, at its source. It's benign and good. Yes, there is in Jesus the story of struggle. He said, seek and you will find. Search and the door will be, knocked, or will be opened for you. So in the fact that he was constantly searching for the kingdom of God, that he wanted to, to draw closer, Indeed, in his agony, he suffered for the kingdom. There is a gift there, because to be able to desire something, to want something, to seek, to look, to constantly be on the alert for receiving a gift, that in itself is a gift. And so in all these elements, you can see that Jesus knew before he gave that he had received something from his family, from nature, from his own vocation, from his sense of his own seeking and searching. Now, there are some people among us who are blessed. Uh, they know that they've been born into families that are good and healthy and strong. And because they have that experience as a base, as a foundation, they come and approach life with a sense of gratitude. Other people are able to look at nature and the beauty of creation and they do it with a sense of profound awe and wonder. They have received something, and they know it, and they instinctively want to share it with other people. There are others among us who spend their life constantly working as volunteers, maybe as a job helping other people. And they know that by constantly doing that, they're alleviating the pain and the suffering of the world and in the process of doing that, they receive something back. And so they too understand that life is fundamentally a gift and they discover that gift when they come and assist and help other people. And indeed, there are people who know nothing but a struggle in their life. For whatever reason, they may be born with the inability to see immediately and quickly uh, the goodness of creation, the goodness of God. And they have to struggle through the dark, long night of the soul so that they can get a glimpse, some sense that God is good, that God cares for them and is with them. And that too becomes a gift because if you can desire and long for beauty and for love, even though you don't immediately have it or grasp it, 
that searching, that impetus in the spirit to seek something that will open up the doors of creation and of life and of God, that too becomes a gift for every person. I suspect in our humanity, all of us have something of all those three elements in us. Uh, to look at Jesus is to receive a gift. It's like a diamond that one has received. And when you hold the diamond up to the light and you turn it in one direction, you get a glimpse of something in the diamond as Jesus is a glimpse of the goodness of his mother and father and of God and of creation. And then you turn the diamond another way and you see something different in it. You see a different kind of light. And that can indeed represent our attempts to work, to volunteer, to help other people and to receive from people. And then the diamond again looked at from another angle becomes the light that sheds light on our experience of anybody who's constantly searching and seeking and wanting to find God. Before you and I can do anything for ourselves, before we can have any kind of mission, before we can go out into the world, we have to have this deep and profound sense that we have received something. Perhaps it's the gift of good parents or the understanding of nature. Perhaps it's the gift of being one imbued with charity to give to other people. And yes, perhaps it's also the gift to know that while there is suffering in one's life, the longing, the desire, the wanting to have that suffering relieved and for the grace of God to be poured into one's life. If you can share that with someone else, then you truly have something that's precious, something that's worthwhile. To see Jesus in all his beauty, his receptivity to God's grace, is to receive something that's open to every person. It's the pearl, it's the diamond, it's the gift that we ought to be eternally grateful for and share it with everyone. Would you join with me please and we'll offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. In thanksgiving to God for the good news he gives us through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord In praise of God for the many good people who through their lives of selfless service proclaim the mighty deeds of God, for this we pray to the Lord. Lord In gratitude for those who through their patient endurance and hope in their suffering reveal God's saving power to us, we pray to the Lord. For all families and for those who nurture and sustain children and young people, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we do all we can personally and through collective action to feed the hungry persons of the world. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in the Middle East, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have called or written to ask for prayers, those having surgery today, those persons near death, those persons suffering from cancer, those with serious family or financial problems, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, you always remember with love and faithfulness all your people. May we continue to trust and hope in your promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Jesus sent the 12 out with the following instructions. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen.